All right, welcome to a very special episode of the Miller Martial Arts Show. As you can see, we have some special guests, Bubby Mitchell, Joseph Alloy, and Micah the Maverick Miller. If you guys need to listen to the previous episodes we've done, that's episodes one and episodes three, where we talked to Bubby and Micah about some of the fights that we are going to be going over today. And we thought that we would take this moment to go over our first amateur mixed martial arts bouts and experiences leading up to the, those bouts. Um, Bubby and Micah, you were at my first fight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bubby and Micah were both at my first fights. I was at Bubby's and we were both at Micah's. And the internet won't stop asking us about when is the interview coming with Joe. You guys love <laughs> Joe for some reason. Who asked that? Dude, everybody. Everybody. So, that's coming very soon. I just learned Joe's last name. <laughs> <laughs> just when you announce it. What's your last name? He told me, he told me my, my mom was. <laughs> <laughs> Bubby, let's start with you. The podcast we did with you sure. was most recent. Let's get to it. So, you kind of let us know already what it felt like going into the bout. Holy shit. Look at like kid me. That's so crazy. Is it a rat tail? Who on me? <laughs> Let me tell you what I could smell right here. The ref's alcoholic breath. <laughs> this guy's name is Christian. He was on the <laughs> Ultimate Fighter two, I think. <laughs> this the play. The name of this place was the main event. Uh, it says it right there. But I remember it. I didn't. It, it, you know what? I can tell you where it's at. North Arnold and 19th Street. And I remember it like it was like the address of it. And remember when we went to go here, there was no fucking TomTom. There's no iPhone plug-in. It's fucking MapQuest. Right. <laughs> it was like yeah. you just had directions. It, On that black and white, <laughs> G, you could call it a GPS. Yeah, I mean, it was like you had that or you, you, you had to pay for like MapQuest. Like you had to, you know, it wasn't like... Same thing about this time, too. We couldn't just get on YouTube and just go find whoever we were fighting. This guy's name was Brandon Keith, trained at the same gym that Melvin Gillard did. This was there. Uh, the gym is actually upstairs from here, and we stayed there. There was, like, dorm rooms. It was really cool. Um, Pat Barry was there at the time. Remember that? He was there. Yeah. Uh, did you Did you have a game plan going into this? Double leg, ground and pound. All right. You Go through it. Uh, and we'll, You tell me when, when you want me to pause it. I don't remember really uh, any bit of, I just remember this guy, just that, just wanting to get up over and over. And for so when you, you guys it, it say like uh, fighting somebody, let's say that's going to be like inexperienced as far as in a grappling game, it's um, it's different because it's unorthodox, because it's not something that's going to be traditional. Just wants to hold, turn, get up. Whole turn. So it was very much like wrestling, honestly, as far as what I remember from it. But I will be the first to tell you, I wasn't paying much attention to my corner, man. It was kind of loud in there. But we talked about how. Th- all right, this position right here, and I remember Cam showing that. That was like something I fell in love with blocking the hip and then kneeing. It was like something nice. I really enjoyed at Cam showing. You know what? I never did that ever again. But yeah, like. Things like this here, passing the mount. I felt completely okay with that, even though he had my head. Let's get some volume to see if we can hear sure. the uh, guy, the guy <laughs> talking shit to the uh, uh, about the fighter getting his ass beat. Yeah, I at one point I had I felt I felt under his chin with my shoulder, but. And then I was just like, well, I'll just punch the guy. <laughs> and I broke my hand there. You broke your hand? I broke my, th- yeah, the, uh, my thumb. I, that, I jacked it up bad. After the fight, it was giant. It was super huge. And uh, I couldn't grab anything for a couple months. I couldn't do anything. It was really purple and fucking meat it out. Did Can't. You get, what, did you get your hands wrapped? Cam did it, so. Okay. Uh, I had a I had a line of tape, <laughs> and I had a line of tape, and uh, 
And I still have those gloves right there in my locker. I still have them to this day. Those are Cam gave them to me. I think Cam killed somebody in those gloves. They were already broken yeah. in when I got them. <laughs> yeah, I mean. yeah, it's like he wanted the, the special power to be blessed upon, upon yeah, you. Yeah. And, and uh, it was on this day. Oh. But it, it eventually it cleared. Like that right there, that was when I knew I, as far as being God. In, in the clear – but I can tell you that I remember, like, this is the first time, not even in training, that I get to do that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that. You may have done it on, we've done it on heavy bags on the ground, but you don't do that to your partner. Right. Yeah, he, he, this is when, like I said, this is a kind of, one of these. He's a little, oh! He's a little bigger than you. How much bigger is, is he? He was like 10 pounds heavier, so yeah. 10, 10, 11 pounds. He was older than me. His wife hated me. And, uh. I was like, I think I was like, I was in the low 120s when I when I fought this fight. Oh! Uh, and then they started clearing here. Oh! Look at this guy. And um, now f- to keep you in 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 mind, now I uh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't. Um, our corner man stopped that. Our coach. Stop yeah. the fight. Our coach. Now, um, let's rewind it and get some audio on that. We're going to crank this thing up. <laughs> He's done. That was our That was our coach. You know, I had those shorts and somebody stole them out of my locker. Yeah. I was gonna never. I was gonna keep them things forever. I got those from uh, JJ. Mm. Gave them to me from Costco Grossa. From Costco Grossa. All right. Anything? Was, anything was, we want to pull pull up? It was a fun time. I mean, it. it I think the uh, when I realized when I, I'd been. You know, Micah, you can you can relate to this. Like wrestling, it's a different emotion. Like even being on the mat, even being on one mat, it was a different emotion. So when I got out on. I realized, like, after, as soon as I think I got within arm's reach, that was when it really kind of sunk. Like, man, this is a, uh, hey, this is a, a fucking, so, a little different feeling than I have, you know, like, than I had when I wrestled. So, the pace was the same, though. That was what I had to learn. The pace needed to be different, but I, I was not adhering to that. I was like, no, the pace is going to be the same. Well, check this out. Like, you guys started off pretty fast. Like, this, right. you both threw strikes pretty hard pretty quickly, and that's when you go for the double. Right. So, Whoa! Yeah, like and then two, two straight, <laughs> two right. <laughs> you know, so like, do you remember? Because you said that you had a lot of like vivid memories of this fight. Like went right there. What do you think? And when, when it's like, oh, with these small ass gloves, this shit just yeah. got real. That was yeah. I say that was more so when I realized that, like, I felt the pace was at the time I was comfortable with the pace because that's just all I knew. Was this instinct for you to reach for that double leg to start off? Oh, yeah, I was, I, and I knew what I wanted, and Cam had advised it. Mm-hmm. All right, so this guy had a boxing background, and I don't know if you remember, but when we met there, he had said he had some kind of an ankle injury and that I and, and asked that I not, like, touch his feet, like, like not leg lock. This him. is so weird. <laughs> and Cam agreed on that for me. And Cam just come back and basically told me, he's like, just take him down and, and just beat his ass. So I was like, well, that's pretty much all I know anyway. So sure, <laughs> I will do that. All right. All right. So. And, uh, and, and. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just textbook. You know, like it, you were able to flail his legs out. You cut a good corner, even though you ran, ran into the ropes. Yeah. And that was another thing is that we had never trained in the ring. Mm-hmm. We were never trying. We had and the Griffin, wall. We had yeah, that and Griffin. Partial yeah, Griffin. Yeah, one. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. It was just, it, you know, it was different. I didn't, I didn't. I actually wasn't concerned with it. I was prepared to go through the ropes if I had to. Just same thing, and I didn't really. But even stop all, and turn because of. Th- this is like textbook. So you you get the guy down, and you start to like lift his legs up. You're not immediately concerned about throwing your right arm over his shoulder. You lift the legs up to flatten him out before you go over the shoulder. Like you're still working, then you get it. Now it's time to to control. And look at you using that like gooseneck grip there. That's the one I still use. 
Yeah. I don't like an underhook as much. I, yeah, in my head, and I also, I, I will tell you, I do remember this really weird. I remember this exact position well. I remember he had clamped down really hard, so I couldn't move my head. So I was like, well, it didn't, it, it didn't harm me. All I needed to do was remain close, obviously, and just try to keep him flat out. But all he wanted to do was anything against the grain to get up, which is it's unorthodox. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It kind of makes it unorthodox at that time. Like and honestly, at that look, time, so that, that's a good yeah, this double, wrestling reversal. Yeah, this like double front head type position. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, y'all are... Yeah, oh. I, I, it was like no jab and pee podding around and not on not with that guy it was just you can tell getting. both guys are both guys didn't really have any kind of fear you know after it, you it took was, him down that first time because you got two two takedowns per year after you took him out the first time you're like oh this is easy I, I, well no, i knew i knew i needed it i knew i needed to get his legs out of the picture as far as in get up in a high amount that's like all i wanted to do I'll tell you this, when he when I mounted him and he bumped me off, I remember that was the first big gulp that I took, like like the pace change. So I I went from going to slowing down the mountain and then when I got bumped, that was like the big like get back in quick. I've seen guys in that same type of position that we're about to get to where you like mm-hmm. he gets up where you have him mounted. Well, now you can look back on it and you're like, I'm owning this fight. But when that happened, were you like, oh, I'm losing? Well, no. Nah, I've seen guys do that. I, yeah, no, I know because you you threw a kitchen sink at them and they walked through it. Right. You know, but no, I, I just I fucking I was like, I guess his damn it, you know his gas ain't gotten baked down yet, but I could hear him the whole time when I, I like, I, he was I mean breathing breathing, but, but I was in great you know at that age. And, and how we trained then, I was in great shape. Mm-hmm. I wasn't concerned about my condition. I was concerned about the pace and, like, when it was finally going to break and if I could break it. Dude, that's still, to this day, one of the most annoying positions to be in. Yeah, when you're is. mounted on somebody and they have that have the head. Yeah. It's, oh, it's so bad. It's just like I said, it's just nuisance more than anything. Cool to see like that position that you were talking about, like the knees to, to the body off right. of that, like framing of right. the hip where no, you're Cam was really moving to north south. Man, he had a lot of really cool stuff he like did. that, he, but he, I haven't seen was, that in a while either. You know, it was just blocking the hip, going north south and blocking the hip and kneeing. I mean, once again, we talk about that on that last podcast, the NHB days and things that you really saw as far as like more of the open lower body strikes that were, you know, available on the ground during that era. It was something that, you know, you say Cam come from that era. Well, that was a really popular thing. You don't really see it much anymore, though. Yeah. You see people weren't using it to transition now. And, I mean, and, and even guilty as is, even even the, what we teach now as well is, is some of the same. So, obviously, again, this is amateur. But, I mean, we're not getting paid and you haven't been trained very long. But we saw pro fights, this same thing happened. You didn't see a lot of controlling of mount and then the picking of your shots. Right. That doesn't like happen until like later with the higher pro- right. pros. But I've seen pros do this. Like you get mount and you just start throwing because you know, oh, mount. If I just get some yeah. unanswered bombs, they're you know, gonna they're going to stop it. But like here, you can see this guy does it. He makes a pretty good shell. But it's, I think that like you're uh, being in a rush is yeah. what's preventing some of these shots sure, from yeah. like get, getting and in it wasn't scoring. Until we slowed down where I started. You know, posting an arm or I moved an arm and that was when I think that was when the big bump came and I got back to my feet but so the same thing that enabled me to land maybe cleaner shots also allowed him a little more of a camp time to make mm-hmm. a big explosion and get his win back and I you know I don't think some of the guys understand even today like the big turtle shell gloves they get to fight with and the no ground and pound on the first, oh. you know, first three fights kind of thing. Just it's beast. Look at your left elbow. Look how high toward the ceiling it is. <laughs> like you're trying to get everything that you can into that into that shot. And I think that was, a, like I said, like I talked about, like we didn't get to do that in training except for on a bag. There's nothing that replaces the emotion of a human yeah. <laughs> under you. And that's what rev up, you know, it kind of revs your heart rate up when you when you get to this you know, to that point, you're like, oh, and shit, I'm on really the... Hit him. That's, yeah. that's like, the adrenaline. Yeah, When yeah. you can smell the blood, like, that you got the mount, and you know that this thing could be over. 
and not just the output of like hitting them as hard as you can, but you have their actual reaction. Right. To the fight. Right. Like you can feel as you're hitting them, you can feel like oh. it's that next element of like how they're reacting to your shot and how right. they're like starting to break, you know, and you're like, OK, I got to yes, I can feel them breaking. So yeah. I got to keep this pace. Right. You know, Like you can't really feel somebody's will on a bag. Uh, let's look at him just getting beaten down. Was there a point in this when you felt like you're you're starting to connect dots from your training, like in a in an actual fight? You're like, oh shit, this makes sense now. Well, when when the the, the side control thing and blocking the hip stuff that was not wrestling oriented to me that was taught to me after wrestling that I was able to do during the fight. And I kind of, it just, you know, I just remember getting in a position. I just remember blocking the hip and, and it, I didn't like, it didn't go through the head. It was just something natural. And Cam was, I mean, the audio that a fight Cam was telling me, he was like cross face and stuff. And I was just punching away at one point, at one point, you know, and anyway, but I was just like oblivious to hearing it. You know what I mean? But there were things that did connect like, Wrestling was first nature to me, so of course, just driving and driving and driving and just getting where I was comfortable was on the ground. But but on the ground, that was probably the first thing that really connected. Like what I did that was taught to me later after you know wrestling was uh, blocking the hip and knee in. Even going to mount was natural to me. You know what I mean? It was. Uh, but anywho, it was. Uh, it, yeah, that those were the like like Michael was talking about like. I think I was in a constant hunt for the break and I felt it and then it wouldn't be there, but then I would feel it again. And then finally towards the end, when I was able to like, if you're mounted on somebody and you don't have to pinch your knees or you, you can post your leg up at one point, like I did that he wasn't escaping. He was just surviving. That was when I really, but I afterwards, yeah, I had uh, at one point, you know, once again, I talked about like my hand, I had no clue it was an injury until after, and that's when it it got really big. And I was like, "Oh fuck!" Cam was I really good. Really hurt my hand. Trainer, but man, he couldn't wrap hands for shit. <laughs> you know, and, and to be fair, he could he could have wrapped my hand or whatever. But if you've seen one of the punches, like my arm turns, and you know, I was just punching. At, I mean, I was hitting forearms. Things that we look at now, I'm like, "God damn, that hurts!" Even during training, that sucks. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah, you just fucking going away. And, I, and so once again, I, I had never had the never had a injury like you know a hand or anything. So I I couldn't tell you like, hey, be careful. You could do these things. Just punched away, and uh, I mean it was fucking elbows, head, everything. That not square either. That's the worst. You're catching like the thumb and the great you know. Anyway, it's and, just funny because when he when he asks you how you want your hands wrapped, what's he say? You want a boxing wrap or a Muay Thai wrap? He makes you feel like, oh, this is about to be the best wrap job. This guy knows all this one shit, wrap? bro. Okay, there's two. And wraps. it's like <laughs> the the hand starts like your knuckles start to like curve like one of those crescent moons. It's like oh, you got the eagle claw going on or and, something and like you know that. What, it's and like, that was, oh, so that's another thing. <laughs> the, the first time my hands had ever been wrapped, and I was like, man. It's supposed to hurt. <laughs> Am I not supposed to be able to do that? Like, my fingers were numb and right. tingly. I was like, oh, well, I guess this is what it is. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know, you yeah, don't yeah, know. You don't know, you don't know, yeah. <laughs> but overall, it was a fun experience. And I remember when we come home. It's a good trip. It was a really good trip. We had a good time. Oh, man, meeting Joanne Conan was a fucking, that's a dude. Was what a, a cartoon. That what dude a cartoon. was a character. I mean, we. We stayed up that night. We, you know, just, we were all too young to go do any fucking thing. I mean, we, so we just sat and just basically hung out in the parking lot. Cole wound up going upstairs and going to sleep. Um, I get emo. I, I would get emo from. He went upstairs and went to sleep, but me and Blake just hung out. Not down. having a, not having a war. I, di I didn't drink. You know. I, oh, so ATT Blake was there too? Yeah. 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 We, we, me and him just in the His parking debut. lot and just, and just hung out, you know, and that was it. And we just. Talk, there was like a techno rave bar beside it, and uh, and then at about three in the morning, my opponent comes back from the hospital, and his wife was like mad at me, and I was like, "Bro, I'm he, sorry." He, it looked, like, he looked messed happy? up. You yeah, it busted his face. Like you something know, out of like the Leprechauns movie. She's like, like, "Are you fucking happy now?" You know, you fucking. I was like, 
Blake's like, what are you? And Blake's the mouth. Yeah, yeah. Blake's like, what, what did you expect them to do? Like, what was he supposed to do? And, I, and she was like, he's got a family. <laughs> Like, but you said bitch though, right? <laughs> but anyway, it was funny as shit. And I was like, well, damn. I helped him out of the car and everything. She she needed help. I don't know what they went and did, but I know they went to the hospital. <laughs> and I was like, God damn. I uh, didn't do all that. Yeah. yeah. And someone just beat his ass afterwards. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, nah, hey, the but swelling you, on his head was actually, so bad. In the video, you know, somewhere in the video, you can hear her. She's like, oh, my God. Matter of fact, <laughs> rewind it to the yeah. the second time I mounted him, the last time I mounted him or whatever. She's somewhere in here. Uh, matter of fact, I think she's in, Mel- in the corner, or Melvin's in the corner coaching him. Let's see what we can get. Well, all right, we, 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 can, uh, we can make that something. <laughs> Let's uh, try that again. All right, she is uh, right in the. Hold on, I guess go back before that. Before this, it was the last time I'm out. It was like the, the last takedown. So like right there. All right. No, I think that's us. You hear Melvin tell him to come out the back door. Yeah. Oh. Let me go oh. to... I can't navigate this. Code. Yeah. Where do you want? Go down midway. Yes, sir. High bridge, says Melvin Gillard. Melvin's on the bridge. UFC warrior. He was grunting this in doing that. That was him like. Mm-hmm. You can just hear a female yelling back there. That's her right there standing like mm. at the corner. That's her. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Melvin Gillard with his gloves on, fighting Lee King later that night. Yeah, dude, for the third time. <laughs> for the third time. Now, what a war. See her. Uh, oh. They have some kind of grudge? I don't <laughs> think so. For the third time? Oh, these folks were happy. That's their hometown boy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I couldn't. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome display. What a what a debut. <laughs> Killer performance. All right, Maverick. So after that, you have a a choice like what you would you rather fight in a ring? Would you rather fight in a cage? I like the ring. Better than the Yeah, I, I I like the ring. I, I, yeah. I do. I like the ring. I, mean, I like the ring. Tachi Palace had the ring. Matt Waller had the ring. They had the ring. I like the ring. Or, I mean, if it's a cage, I like the bigger one. I hate the chicken coops. I just, I fucking hate them. They change the fight. Yeah, they dynamic. do. 110%. They take, they take away, like, a lot of the, a lot of the distance management. Just the, We could do a whole podcast on yeah. cage versus ring and what yeah. happens with that. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we apologize to everybody about the audio. Look, we're not dealing with 4K here. Okay, so <laughs> just chill out just for a the, minute. The fact that we even have video of this is pretty wild. Yeah, and this particular one looks like a VHS tape. It has like a couple hiccups in it. But if you if you go listen to the on the podcast, episode one, Micah's in high school. He had just turned 18 two weeks before this bout. We got, once again... Referee George Allen in the house. Um, this guy, John Trent, it was his first fight too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Steve Hedden. It was a, it was a fair fight. 
Steve Hedden is in, in the, is in the opposing corner, and that was a guy that our coach Cam had fought. So a little bit of like a double rivalry kind of happening there. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Both guys like Georgia MMA pioneers. All right, let's uh, let's watch it. And tell me when to pause, or we can watch it through the whole. Th <laughs> this thing takes just a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. Got that good double leg, trying to go for the outside trip, too. I just like that, that drive. He never stopped driving. I remember this like it was I remember yesterday. Had the, I remember how they stood up, you know. Yeah. All right, now that we got uh, – I, I have a horrible memory. So, like, you just said you remembered it like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah. What was what was the training like for Micah leading up into this? Well, Micah had come out, Micah had come out of wrestling, and I remember – I was freshly heartbroken. He, yeah, he was mad. He was throw, throwing his medal away at the fucking like grocery store. Right. You know, he was mad. We had just left what Riverside, M Riverside Military. Yeah. And yeah, we talked about that. Anyway, his, and it, and it was like, and so he was coming off that, and our room was like, "Fuck that! I'm ready for MMA." And then, obviously, he was in shape. Like he just come out of this season, and I, I really man, I don't see what it was like. I remember Cam working with him. He's like, dog, <laughs> dog. And I, it was all about the guard. It was far as like, he's like, he's not going to get around your guard. He's not going to this. And I remember it was like hunting Triangle City. I remember talking to Cam about it because he was like, I, I want you to I want you to be Micah's partner because you're shorter. Okay. So did you have a hard time with Micah's guard? Yeah. I mean, he I had a, a big brother over Micah kind of thing as far as like age wise. Yeah. But yeah, he obviously yeah, after yeah. that, he grew up really quick. Like after that, after the last state meet and so coming into this, what was training with him like? Long fucking leg. It was like <laughs> triangle escape, this and that, yeah. and that was it. And it was like, and you know, I remember camp flexibility. Yeah, you know, but yeah, trying very, to get around the guard, trying to move. Flexible. Yeah, it's very unorthodox. And that's where Cam was like banking, like right then. He was like, dude, he's gonna get crushed. I remember Cam talking to me after training one night, and he was just like. He's like, he's gonna fucking kill John Trent. <laughs> All right, well, let's see what happens here. Second double leg and a nonstop drive. Used to uh, snaking them calves, apparently. He didn't lock his hands. John Trent was a kickboxing instructor at one of the academies up there. He uh, ran a bunch of classes. Knuckle up or velocity. Yeah. Just, just restart it, just to give it, give it detail here. Okay. There's one thing I, I remember doing that is, is watch how I snake the leg here with, with my leg. Boom. You know, like like you trying to use my length, like I had the drive, but I remember always trying to do like uh, Coach Dan Kelly would show me like some of this long guy stuff that uh, that I could do to that was just a little bit different than than some of the traditional stuff that you'd see some of the shorter guys doing. But yeah, man, I I didn't have any real sh striking training for this. I remember it was like we had to. We took it on, you know, it's like, do you want to fight in two weeks or whatever? And didn't, and it was like, well, we, we better get them on the pads, you know? So it's like, <laughs> it's, it was, it was like that. It was like, you know, there wasn't a real base to really pull from. It was more of a, you know, you're cramming last minute. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we got to at least see if we could like in two weeks, get him on the pads and, and get him some, get him at least used to like throwing and receiving punches, right. you know? This was cool, like seeing you, like instead of like pulling the rug out of the tablecloth, like the sommelier does. Like instead of doing that, where you lock hands and pull your butt out, uh -huh. you actually just kind of turning, kind of taking the bounce back from the ring. Like that's pretty cool. See, like you, you didn't want to yeah. pull pull him out from the rope, so you turned him so his head would face the middle. Mm -hmm. Like pretty, pretty cool to see that. Well, because they just stood me up, you know. Yeah. For going into the into the ropes. He's working on body shots, it looks like. Oh, that big bridge. And that looked tight. Like, the way he was holding your head, you could just see that your face is yeah. purple, even in the top side mount. Much better now. How strong was he? Is he a strong guy? I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> don't remember. I feel like every, I feel like at fight speed, everybody seems kind of strong. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
but you know here that's a that's a really good triangle setup especially modern day you know you, that one in one out didn't have the finishes really i knew i had something here at this point but just not quite sophis sophisticated two. enough as far as the triangle finishes go but even even at that and Andy Foster early part, yeah, you know. Andy Foster. So you got a triangle there. Yeah, it's like that rear mounted triangle, that one that uh BJ Penn tried to get against Matt Hughes. Mm -hmm. It's like that. And and it, it's in funny second in fight. modern grappling right there, you, you're seeing this specific triangle right coming back a little more, especially with finishing wise. For sure. I remember my science teacher was in the crowd. <laughs> so Shout apt. out. Todd Freeman. Here, I'm trying to extend the arm, I think. Putting some pressure. And it looks like he gets out, gets on top. I know one thing I had going for me, at least, was I, I was coming out of wrestling season, so it was always wrestling. And then when I was at... MMA training, I was always the smallest guy, so I was always on bottom. Mm -hmm. So I felt like he, I at least had, I didn't feel like I had, like when you see a lot of people getting into their first oh, fight. Oh, arm bar. You, they're comfortable in one position or the other. And I feel like I had a, I had decent experience on top and bottom. Yeah. The arm bar looks tight. It looked like it was something. Nice this triangle. Was, this was just Cam McCarg one on one, man. Yeah, yeah. Teaching yeah. us how to fight off our back. You know, a lot of people weren't weren't very good at it then, and still aren't. Nice little out the back door escape. All right, punch okay. us to the back of the dome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we gotta stop it. Okay. So, so this was a this was a good pro call by George Allen. I guess I got excited and uh, hit him in the back of the head, and he stopped me because <laughs> he was going to warn me that I was hitting him, uh, that I was fouling. And what he did was he he I got up like I won, and he just got control of the situation, told me that I didn't win, and instead of just, like, waving it off, you know, like, like they do today where it's like, oh, we stopped the action. We just can't go back, so it's over. You know, he was like, got control of the situation and was like, we're, we're not going to end it this way. These guys came to, to fight and get experience, so we're just going to restart it. And, and that's what he did. He explained it to both corners. You see John, he thinks he lost. But he's like, explained it, and we just keep going. Oh! <laughs> oh, there's a knee! <laughs> he goes for a head and arm. What a weird, yeah. Yeah, and I get a hook. I remember getting that a lot with a lot of the big guys I trained with. They they get head and arms on me a lot, and being long, you know, if you could see that back door escape if you could get a a long hook on the opposite side. So he's got my head, and I'm kind of stuck, but just trying to work it out so I can get some back exposure. And I guess that was the end. And I'm just slugging. <laughs> Second round slugging. Same position. Same, Same position. part of the ring. <laughs> Same position. And you'll see that a lot because, like, we're we're new, right? So it's we're not do, we're not going to be doing a lot of adapting in the fight. You know, it's pretty much we're f trying to figure it out, and this is what we got. And you know, that's why you would see something like that. We're where you wind up in the same position. And I think I'm going to get him here with the same triangle set up too, you know. And George Allen, the striker that he is, can stand him up. <laughs> oh! oh! Just swinging from the hip. Clubbed him with that left hook. <laughs> <laughs> no sprawl from uh, the state runner-up. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, the triangle is in. Triangle's in. It's getting rolled over. And then we're just we're finishing him from out here. Bubby gets in, he's got the the blonde <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah. Still got that shirt off. <laughs> and I had hair. <laughs> it was a great time. <laughs> Yeah, I was really, really happy for this, really excited. I felt like, uh, I just felt like I was good at something. Yeah. You know? Look at Cam ahead of the time. None of that the, fanny pack. None of the shit that I was doing in school I cared about. Uh, but this I cared about. Yeah. So it was cool. Did you feel like it was a good restart from wrestling? Like a fresh start? Like uh, a, did, it, did it wash away? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I think anybody's had kind of a better ending to certain things, especially something you enjoyed, and then you get into something else that's, like, especially relatable, like MMA. I know for me it felt almost clean slated yeah. in a way. It's kinda, you're kind of starting over again, yeah. you know. Because Re- I knew I would never do another wrestling match ever again. You know, because yeah. that, was, that was like I wasn't going to go to college. And that was all done, so. <clears throat> It, it felt good because I I knew that and I knew that fighting was going to last longer than wrestling, so I had right. more like I was I had like a renewed kind of excitement, especially after the the way everything ended with with the high school stuff. Is it raining? Yeah. <laughs> it's weird how how baby faced everybody was then, you know. That's crazy. Looking back, man, I, I need to bring back some of that drive. <laughs> you're, 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 all right. Does yeah. it bring me as well to think to ask that? Do you ever think that, like, the mentality that you had to keep just, like, I mean, just like crushing forward then? Yeah. Do you ever think that, you know, we all, you grow old, you lose a bit of that, and you get smarter along the way, not mm-hmm. to keep pressure forward, but, but that also puts you in a position to where you are of, like, uh-huh. being that fucking balls wall forward, and, like, that's what, I mean, it's weird how it's a it's a double edged knife. Like they're the same things. It's like I live by the sword, die by the sword. Literally, because pushing forward like that, it makes you hard to deal with. But then you know, you can't sustain it forever. You right. can't. It's time to grow and evolve as an athlete and as a fighter, especially learn to compose yourself and go to from fighting nine minutes to fifteen minutes. I uh, I thought of that as well. I was like, man, I used mm-hmm. to be like one hundred and eighty miles an hour, and then as I got but, older, but, I yeah. Down. But when I think about it too, it was like. That was just the gear that I was in. Right. Like, I was just like, they said go, and was, I was yeah. so, like, amped up and jittery, and it was like, I'm just going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that's not, right. that's not, that's that's not good. Right. You know, like, no, right. like I could, you know, being more as more experienced now that I am, like, I can do things way more efficiently with, than that. But when it does kind of time to need that drive, right. like, you need to be able to call on that, right. you know? Agreed. So... Amateur fights, like you said it before, was you're like, man, I was just throwing punches, I was catching elbows and everything else, you know, hitting forearms, broke my thumb, and it's kind of like, you know, now you'd be like, oh, I've never throw that punch, like, you know, same thing with you, like you're like, I'm just throwing from the hip at this point, yeah. you know, now everything is so much more methodical because you you've been in that situation over and over and over, you know, and like I I, I told I told my wife the other day about like. Uh, that, that old quote that keeps coming around, it's like you can't, uh, the body can't go where the mind's never been, mm-hmm. you know. So you guys both being amateurs and entering into this, you're like, you don't know what to expect. Yeah. You don't know, you know, you said you can't hear your corner or you're not paying attention to your corner. And that, I think we see that when we go and watch fights, you're like, dude's not even listening to his corner, mm-hmm. you know. So it's kind of the, kind of the yeah, same all, thing. All you really knew was, like, you, you heard, or I watched a lot of fights, you know, so it's like that was my experience yeah yeah you know it's like okay so trying to learn from from watching but at the same time like you're and you, you would hear coaches talk about it. it's like you want to do this you want to do that you want to break them it's like but you don't know what that really feels like right. like it's all been drawn up on the board right. but you've never like felt it and even now like you get to feel it three four times a year if you're active but you just you're smarter about it now but because you, 
being more experienced, but like, man, back then you didn't know what that felt like. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so. funny. It's funny watching <laughs> that. Cause you can see like several, several positions where you're like, Oh, mount a triangle, just roll a mount a triangle yeah. or like, Oh, there's the dead orchard. Like, yeah. you know, little stuff yeah. like that, you know, but looking back, like you're only as good as your training. Like it can only take you as far cause that's all, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, with experience comes knowledge and with knowledge comes power. So great power oh, comes man. great responsibility. Yeah. Responsibility <laughs> right there, yeah, yeah. All right, let's watch Coles. We're going to get you an Uncle Ben patch now. All right, so <laughs> before this starts, maybe, like, you two can give some, like, pre-frame. Like, what, leading up to this, what was, like, my training like or y- y'all's viewpoints? Because, like, I was the first to fight you know, of, of our, of our group, even the, the guys that had been training a lot longer, I was the first to do this. So what were you guys thinking at the time? Like, what was it like? What was your opinion of me doing it? Was there confidence or not? It's okay to just say no. <laughs> we thought you were going to get your ass beat, but like, just, yeah. No, but with, I, didn't, I didn't have any real frame of reference for like what you were stepping into though either. It's not like, oh, you're jumping into the ranks. Like, what are the ranks? I didn't know what the hell the ranks were. I just knew that you were fighting. I was, I was you like, know. oh, it's a four-man tournament. In one day? <laughs> oh, that's pretty neat. <laughs> I was like, and I was at so, the Roy D. Martin Civic Center. I, I remember that Cam had a lot of confidence in, in you, so mm-hmm. I had a lot of confidence in you because I, I believed in Cam, you know? Same. Like, right. I, that's my cool. mindset was that I, I was ridiculously calm. I was like, if my coach thinks that I deserve to be here, then I'm going to crush. Like, that's just what I thought. Yeah, well, oh. well I didn't know any of the co- – I wasn't familiar with any of the other Atlanta scene. I didn't know – I didn't really know about Steve Head. I've heard the name, but I didn't yeah. know what Steve Hedden or, you know, Jacques – who was it? Jacques Ray. Jacques Ray. What was his real name, though? Uh, Romero. His full, na- full Romero, name? Romero, yeah, Calvin okay. yeah. yeah, like, I didn't know any uh, about anything about that. Like, I, I just knew that – I just believed in Cam. Yeah. Cam believed in Cole. Yeah. So I believed and in Cam, Cole. And dude, Cam and we was, trained hard. Yeah, what yeah. yeah. Talk about the training. What were we doing? Like, we, like dude, we were in the shed. <laughs> just, just fucking live yeah. rounds. That's yeah. what people talk shed, about. Like Gold's Gym is really where we yeah. trained at. All. I trained in the shed once. I know you guys trained there more than me. Cam but. asked me to to basically do a fight off, like a wrestle off, <laughs> but like a, a fight off against Jarrell. Oh, really? Yeah. He wanted me yeah, and Jarrell to fight. To see who got the right to represent the team. It's crazy. And how it's, yeah. It was like but clear he, the mat. And we, he, we, but did he go to practice? He didn't go to practice as much though. No, he? no. But like, they thought about giving it to him because he had some, and he was a hard dude, yeah, obviously. Yeah, was a hard dude. And we we like trained hard that day while they they all just watched. Nobody like won, I guess you could say. But then, Drew was just like, oh hell, <laughs> I don't even want to do it. You can go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, the training was live. It was like all live training. That was like the, yeah. everybody asked about stuff like that. Then you see people now sparring like once every ten days. The shit was like, what? Nah. And he would show techniques, but it would always be like there would be no structure to it. You know, like we everybody we'd go live, and then it, it would be like just this long practice, and people like kind of going live yeah. here, taking breaks randomly, you know, doing striking, doing grappling. And then in between, he would show, you'd ask a question, and then yeah. he would, you know, then he'd show you something for 15, 20 minutes, and kind of like break it down, and you kind of get to do it. Then you'd go back. It was all very like. Yeah, it's very sporadic. So sporadic. you see like the entourages <laughs> that fighters bring with them and all these people in the corners. Like, the, I don't have a great memory, but I only remember me and Blake being in the back. Were you guys in my corner? No, mm-hmm. me and me and Trey Brown and I all of us stands. were yeah, we're outside. So watching. our team's in the stands, but I just remember me and Blake had I mean, two different mind frames. I was in the back, like pacing, like calm, but calm before the storm, like I'm going to unleash. And I like Blake was like trying to stay busy and rocking back and he was really, really, really nervous. Like there's nothing bad about that. I just given some context, like I just remember it was me and him. Maybe Waller was in the back. I don't know, but I only remember me and Blake being in that back room. And uh, 
he was our teammate that was also fighting that night in the 170 pound four man tournament. So let's get this first fight out of the way. 30 year old kickboxer, I'm 19. Oh, <laughs> look at that body. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as you guys can see, Cole turned down a lot of D1 offers to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to fight amateur. Let's just, I'll, I'll do this. I just want to have some volume on that. I mean, you got to you gotta have volume on it because this is what I remember, the first thing I remember about it, just the noise it made. They called me John Deere because I had a John Deere hat. And all I knew was throw everything as hard as you could. And these kicks were like making like the hardest smacks. Yeah. Really hard. All of them were. Like I was throwing to break my own shins and feet. Uh. Like kicking his forearms as hard as I could. That's George Allen in the back. He was kind of cornering me. Him and, I guess it was Cam. Him and Cam. Okay, so that was cool. Uh, the shin kind of hit him in the chest. He was moving backward. It's not like I kicked this guy in the head and dropped him, but it's cool just to like throw a kick and see somebody fall down. Um, why was I not using my hands as much? I just, George Allen kept calling for the right hand, throw the right hand, throw the right hand. And I just wasn't as confident. Cam was a kicker and I was a kicker. Cam was a guard player. I was a guard player. I was like his, his mini me, you know? So I just tried to do like what he did. And I felt that I could use my kicks to keep the distance. And even today I have a very hard right hand, but I don't always throw it. Cause I feel like once you start throwing it, people start to dial it in so I want to save it for that for that oomph you know but uh he does fall down and that's cool so this position me and Micah the biggest pet peeves for like modern fighters is guys just standing and backing up uh -huh. like these are free leg kicks guys and I don't just mean to the thighs I mean the the outside and the insides of the knees yeah. Uh, below the knees, even below the calf, kick yeah. their actual ankle. Cam was teaching us this back then, and you're going to see me throw some really cool, like, stomps and axe kicks and spinning <laughs> kicks, you know. Whew, just throwing heat. I did the same type of stuff against uh, TJ O'Brien when I fought in Milwaukee in the UFC. Um, never let a guy get up. These are free kicks. You don't have to jump in the guard. See, I didn't want to jump in his guard either, um, even though George Allen is asking me to do it over and over. <laughs> These are free kicks. Well, in the modern game, somebody's going to be up by now, you know. Right. They're going to. But the ropes are not allowing this guy to yeah. get up either very easily with the without a barrier. Woo! Going back to Turtles in Time. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a. It's funny. That's a position that kind of became dated, right? It became out of style. Oh, just head dribbling off of the map. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Boom! The barrage. George Allen called for me to take my time. Oh. His head is just getting busted up, y'all. Oh. oh God. And so. I mean, you just overwhelmed this guy. He never really threw much at you, and you just came in with so much juice. Yeah. And he, he never had a chance. The, the, the one thing that's like crazy is we counted one time and there were fifty unanswered <laughs> punches, and this referee Sean Gay, um, he was a fighter himself, but this is just part of this old we didn't know what we were doing like let let these guys die and this this was amateur we weren't yeah. even getting paid a dime for this and uh 
The, he wasn't actually stopping the fight. He, well, he was he was trying to pull us back to the center. And I remember this guy, not only was his face actually red from the, the, the hands that I had given him, as he goes to stand this guy back up and bring him into the center after that last left hook hit that you guys can see that knocked his head back and a couple of those, his head was bouncing off of my hand and the floor, is that when he goes to bring us back in, he goes, all right, you okay? And he goes, <laughs> like he, that's the noise that he made. It was like I'm not me. He, Bobby, we were laughing at the man. Like, like I, I know that that that's a bad thing. So he wasn't like uh, obviously unconscious, but he was out. Like when he goes, "You okay?" and he goes, <laughs> "Like that's when he waved it off." Was and and that's why he wasn't actually trying to stop it. So let's watch all fifty of these one more time. God. Look at him trying to give me more space to just keep dropping these. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Look at Joe. Mm, mm, mm. So, so you can kind of just see me walking around the ring. I remember that uh, I can't remember if it was Cam or Waller tried to pick me up, and I said, "Put me back down. I'm not done yet." I'm getting like chills over here thinking about that. Like, I was very focused, and yeah. right when that happened, I was not in any type of celebrating mood. I was like, I have one more fight to crush this guy. I've done nothing. I've accomplished nothing. And it was like that's different. That's yeah, not a normal he, um, mindset for people to have. When I fought in the first four men, uh, when I the first time I fought in Macon, mm -hmm. he beat Logan Johnson in on my bracket on my other end, but he hurt his hand. But I remember the same thing. No celebrate. Matter of fact, the the video of that fight, the afterwards, it was and Hen Ray's immediately out because I that was for me when it settled, it went back to tournament wrestling. I was like, I remember this feeling. You don't you know, you're not like ecstatic, you're for you know, when you're in a tournament, like, oh, I fucking won. Dude, you got a whole field to go through, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I remember that was that for me, that was when it zoned back into wrestling again. I was like, all right, I know the feeling of having somebody on my back. I was like, I wanna know who, who's next. And then yeah. Yeah, yeah. You like back at it again. Oh, and when I w when I had him put me back down, raised my hand, I walked right back to the locker room, and you know what I did? Really weird. I just chilled out. I wasn't like jacked. I was like, I very clear thoughted. I was like, I need to rest because I have to do this again. And like we talked about, like what it was like the first time, where it is different than training. Even though we train really, really hard, it's like. I just got to throw 50 unanswered punches on this dude, and I was throwing those kicks as hard as I could. And I went right back to the locker room. I was like, nope, still got to do it again. But I remember that this was like, after that first one, it was like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. You know, pretty cool. All right. Next one, same same day, maybe like an hour apart, Maybe. So this guy, oh, sorry. same one. I'm sorry. So, so we all grew up playing sports. Okay. Did, do you guys think that your idea, like the what you bring to the academy now, the team camaraderie, all that other stuff, do you think that was established through your coach? 100%. In fighting, or is it from team sports? Like, do you see correlations? Oh, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that I, I think that the thing that was really attractive to me about uh, Academy of the Fighting Arts, and we changed our name to Team Praxis later, was that it was it wasn't here. There's 180 people here that train here. It was not that. There was like 13 people <laughs> between two schools, and like we were really close. And I played team sports growing up, so like what you're saying, and um. That's what I really dug about Cam and that team is that there weren't many people, but we were super tight knit because of what you do in the trenches together and how you learn and how that I was looking for something harder. I play a little bit of hockey, but baseball my whole life. But I was like a harder kid mentally. Right. And like I always wanted something more extreme, something that was difficult, something that uh, like reforged myself. I was always into that idea, and I wanted to do something harder than anything that anyone had ever done. 
And so this was like the first thing that I was like truly exposed to like that. Um, I dug that and I dug that we did it together. So like I, that was really attractive to me. Yeah. All right. So this guy, another 30 something year old guy, Harry. Um, <laughs> he smelled guys. He smelled really bad. Like that. Some of these old school guys that weren't very good. They did things like not shower. Yeah. That was like a tactic because they didn't want to be grappled with. They thought that that would actually keep you from grappling them. That if you r smelled really, really bad, that you would try to strike them and play their game instead of grappling. So this is, there's people at home, I hope that they're laughing like I am right now because it doesn't work. But <laughs> I remember being at the weigh-in. I think this guy worked construction and probably didn't shower for the whole week because that's what he smelled like at the weigh-in. Ugh. So two and a half minutes was the first uh, bout length. This is much less. Oh, no sprawl coal. <laughs> so I pretty much land in this like pre-frame for a triangle. And I just remember thinking that was easy. But he was really strong. Like, I'm still not man strong, but he was already man strong. Like I said, I'm 19 and he's 30 something. He's just like in this horrible spot. And even when I got here, I was like, God, this is going to take me forever to adjust. find it odd that how easy that triangle came no it was how i landed right it wasn't like i set that thing up like this guy but yeah I, I yeah that it, i remember in training though like like people knew that you were good at that and you wouldn't just get it on the you know like oh yeah easy. Like but you just look at the, the way it just kind of like <laughs> you landed there and then you just pulled the rest and then you got it is yeah. Kind of surprising. Yes. Uh, that, like I said, I thought was like that was easy. That literally mm -hmm. crossed my mind. But I, just as fast as that happened, I was very focused on, you know, all right, let's get this done, you know, and it gets done. But I didn't understand like the emotion. It didn't come till later. I was really more like it's done. I like I did it. You know, it wasn't like a. I didn't feel <laughs> Richard Cox. Richard Cox. <laughs> him in the head. Yeah, you're good. any kind of way other than just like happy, you know. Oh, yeah. And then I get this cool trophy thing. And there it is, straight ahead. Yeah. You guys can see it. Total velocity in the valley, last man standing champion. November eighth, two thousand three. Pretty, pretty cool moment. So uh, you guys can kind of see our origins, um, how we first started. Can you, you know. put the Can you put the relation of mine and Michael's wrestling background of going 180 miles an hour, <laughs> and then Cole's not? <laughs> He's the only one out of us three that was composed his first fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I obviously I was not a good striker. <laughs> Okay, that's that. That would be an understatement. But I was very and comfortable. You nervous that you weren't a good striker. I, I was very comfortable throwing kicks yeah. as hard as I could, and I kind of want. I was like I said, I wanted something hard, and that's why. Like after this, I was just like, it's over. And then in other amateur fights, like he was talking about when he fought, and I fought, I was like in my hotel room while they were out because like I was longing for somebody to go to battle with me. I wanted to. This is we're at, you're talking about, You're making it sound like that was before. This is after we're talking about. We were out after, not before. No, but I was sad. <laughs> I was I was sad. Sad that it was over. I was sad that this guy didn't give me what I was longing for. I, that that the battle, you know, like the back and forth, me getting broken and beaten and lacerated. I wanted that so bad, and so like I would just be like, all right. Like, let's just go back and train, and maybe I can find somebody who can give me that later. <laughs> Straight up. I'm just telling you what it was like. It's kind of weird. But then I, but then later, I got those things, and I didn't want those who, anymore. <laughs> who, was, who, was, who was the first to give you that? I, th I really thought that Chris Mickle was the first to give me that, but then when you watch the fight, it was like I just beat his ass the whole time. But he broke my two of my ribs yeah. in that fight off of like uh, an arm bar. I had him in an arm bar. And I just had to push, being able to push through something and like having every other time I'd, the fights ended in the first round. 
And so when I went into that third round and finished that guy in the third round, we'll go over that fight later, you know. Mm -hmm. That was my second pro fight um, after having 10 amateur fights. That was, like, where I felt a true, I guess you could say, like, test, where I had to, like, gut through something, you know, for the first time. I just remember, like, being in the shower. Uh, it was like a, like a, one of those, like, cube kind of showers, like with the, the curtain that you just throw over, like a regular, like the, how you have at the gym. And, like, I was just, like, in a seated position, just, like, crying, p partially out of, like, emotion f to being able to push through and gut out the wind. But, two, I was, like, in real pain. Like, when you actually break a rib, not uh, crack some cartilage, it's very painful. So I'm, like, emotional <gasps> and breathing deep. But then when I breathe deep, it hurts, you know. So, like, I just remember being like that in the locker room. It was really painful. But I hope you guys liked that. This was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for doing this yeah. with us. Stuff. Pretty cool, and uh, y'all cool, stay. It's cool to see that the. You, hey, all right, back to what we talked about in the last podcast with our first amateur fights and what you see today in people's first amateur fights. What are the major differences right offhand that you can think of today versus when we fought our first? Besides the training methods, to the death Outside mindset. Of training methods, but to the death mindset. Maybe yeah, the yeah. actual fight itself. You see yeah. the difference. Yeah. Like for free. Yeah. <laughs> to the death. I agree. I do agree. I think we all bowled that down last time to like the mentality was the difference of old school NHB and modern MMA with some of the mind frame differences. I agree with that. You think that was partially in how we were trained? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were we were hard. We were hard. What about the we talked about this before. What about the uh, level of knowledge that you have? now going against an opponent versus what you had then because you're like oh i mean there's no there's no video there's no youtube i mean you know, <laughs> there's you know there's also no comparison to what some of these guys levels are at like they're actually well-rounded as an amateur before they get in there they're training three years before having a first amateur fight i trained five months he trained a few months he trained a few months total you know mm -hmm. um but i would i would there's guys that have been training like three years doing their first amateur fights and I was like that five month training Cole would have beat that guy's ass I've told you that before about some of the guys we've seen and like he's kind of like uh, like I was like I would have made that guy get into my guard like I would have found a way to win you know but I think it was just the mindset I think that the sport versus this is life mindset it's just different yeah it's different there were and I, I think you know what talking about that uh, it all wraps back around sport versus this is life that also is a direct correlation. Like he just said, there's 180 people here. There were 13 where we trained at. Nobody did this shit as a hobby. It, it, you didn't see, like, you had to be dumb. Because yeah. you, you, your job wouldn't allow, I mean, we had a guy, Jan Gizerman. Head squeezing Jan. Head squeezing Jan. His, his dad was like a Russian national champion Greco wrestler. Yeah. Jan was like an engineer or some shit. Like, he couldn't risk the injury. And then, you know, you had Weeby. Same thing, John Weeby. Like, yeah. some of them guys, like, they had jobs that wouldn't allow them to dive beyond, All in. you know. But they could have been, like, hammers, you know, at the time, and they were. But it was like they, they didn't get to live it as a life because they were, like, they couldn't get fucked up like that and go to work. Right. We were fucking kids, you know. And uh, I don't know, it was just, I think that was a big difference. And not many people in our era was like, because at the time, the sport was still hidden. It was still, it was still looked at differently than today. Nobody was like, hey, I just want to come in and get in shape, and uh, yeah, because it was like, oh yeah, well we're sparring every fucking day, and you can die every day if you like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> CTE has entered the chat room. That's fucking what it was. You know, you have fitness. You know, you have no many times. You know, I did. I mean, I'm pretty sure they they can relate. There's times I like got in my car afterwards and. I remember sitting there for a minute. I was like sweating, but I wasn't hot. But it was from my bell had been rung so bad. I was like, fucking shit. Like, God damn, this reminds me of a fucking football practice when I was a kid. Just getting my bell rung. I'm like, God damn. And it's Tuesday. <laughs> so, like, holy shit. <laughs> you know? And it was just, that was just so normal then. And I think that contributes directly to the, like how we fought then as well compared to today is like, there's weekend warriors, there's hobbyists that want to dabble and have their first fight, and there's no ground and pound in Georgia. And they can get away from that because it's less taxing than our what we were, you know, small glove and all. Small glove. 
there in seven ounce gloves or turtle shell gloves, depending on which promotion, shin guards, and you know, it's a little more like Cole's talking about that position, Micah, as well. The position just being on your back with a fighter over you is, is a gone position, they don't allow that anymore. They just stand you up, yeah. It's like a bit different then, I think. I wonder if some of the guys today, like how they would have played up then in the training room and in the fight. I would like to see it. I, I mean, you know. Some areas right now, you know, some of the are more like rural areas. Sure, they probably still they train real good still, but still not like that. I don't think, not like that. I think everybody's dialed down for the most part and kind of got on the somewhat on the same page. Maybe not technically, but I think they understand like that how it taxes your body, and they probably run off more than they keep. You know, there's a lot of once again a lot of people like they're just hobbyists. Not many people that are really in it because it you had to be that way to survive in our room. You had to be all in, or you were just going to get chewed the fuck alive. I just remember that. And, like, you want to bring a friend? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got one that won't fucking live. Like, yeah. You're like, no, nah, I ain't got no friends like that. <laughs> my friends, they're all my friends right here. You just, that's all it was. Yeah. But um, appreciate you guys. We'll, we'll, we'll do this again. Later. You ever thought about though like how would some of these guys today I look at that I look at some of my guys today like like Lindsay Lindsay would stack up Chase would stack up yeah oh, Q would man. stack up but like some of the other guys I'm like I, I and I'd make sure I go like bitch you bitch you bitch you bitch you